Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss guidelines for planning of multi-storied or high-rise buildings. The first one is floor-to-floor -floor height of individual floors. The floor-to-floor -floor height of a building is a function of required ceiling height, depth of a structural floor system and material, and vertical space required for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing distribution networks. It may vary from 3.2 meter to 4.8 meter depending upon the type of building. The overall building cost and the architecture of a high rise building depends predominantly on its structural system. The high rise buildings are dynamically sensitive to lateral loads and hence the structural system of such buildings are designed to resist the lateral loads, especially wind load or seismic loads. Such buildings shall be governed by various aspects as given below. Based on lateral loads, the height for various structural systems in different seismic zones shall be as per Table Number 1 of IS 16700-2017. The height to base ratio shall be as per table number 2 of the same IS code. This is the table number 1 which gives maximum value of height above top of base level of buildings with different structural systems. And this is the table number 2 which gives maximum slenderness ratio according to the seismic zones. The geometry should be rectangular, square or elliptical or circular. The length to breadth ratio should not be greater than 5. In case of L-shaped building, each arm shall be treated as a separate entity. Concrete should be of minimum M30 grade and maximum M70 grade. The minimum grade of reinforcement steel shall be FE500 and no lapping of bars is allowed for diameter of bars greater than 16 mm. Geotechnical investigation besides normal investigation, potential analysis and estimation of soil spring constants along with modulus of subgrade reaction shall be done. Bore holes shall be spaced at 20 meter to 25 meter with minimum of 4 bore holes per tower. The depth of bore holes should be at least 1.5 times of estimated width of foundation in soil and 30 meter in rock. Embedded depth shall be at least 1 15th of height of building for raft foundation and 1 20th of height of building for pile and pile raft foundation. For high rise and tall buildings, wind analysis shall be carried out to evaluate the impact of wind movement and natural flow changes because of the new building proposed to be erected. Strategies may include application of cross ventilation and thermal comfort factoring prevalent wind patterns, seasonality, stack effect and other principles. Provision of core area The core of high rise and tall buildings comprises of common circulation elements such as lifts, staircases, fire staircases, horizontal circulation corridors, lift lobbies and shafts. The core area required depends upon type of accommodation, height of building and plinth area. It varies with number of staircases, lifts, width of corridor and additional mandatory spaces required in a building. Further, it also varies as per site conditions, architectural design, climate and geological location of the station and any other relevant factors. Accesses and Circulation The layout and design of spaces 
for horizontal and vertical movement may be planned suitably by adopting following guidelines. The approach to building and open spaces on all sides shall be of minimum 6 meter width. The said open space shall be kept free from obstructions and shall be motorable. Main entrances to the premises shall be of adequate width to allow easy access to the fire engine and in no case it shall be less than 5 meter. If archway is provided over main entrance, bottom of archway shall not be at a height less than 4 meter. Buildings shall be planned, designed and constructed to ensure fire safety and this shall be done in accordance with the provisions laid down in National Building Code of India or local municipal authority. Alternate source of electric supply Standby electric generator shall be installed to supply power to staircase and corridor lighting circuits, lifts, fire detection system, fire pumps, in case of failure of normal electric supply. The generator shall be capable of taking starting current of all the machines and circuits stated above simultaneously. I hope you understood the points discussed in the video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss provision of lifts and exit requirements. First, let us discuss provision of lifts. At least one lift shall be provided in every building more than 15 meter in height. In case of buildings more than 24 meter in height, at least two lifts shall be provided. However, in case of a proposal to add one additional floor to an existing building having a lift, it will not be necessary to raise the existing lift to the additional floor. All the floors shall be accessible for 24 hours by the lift. The lifts provided in the building shall not be considered as a means of escape in case of emergency. The lift machine rooms shall be separate and no other machinery shall be installed therein. The planning and design of lifts, including their number, type and capacity depending on the occupancy of the building, the population of each floor based on the occupant load and the building height shall be in accordance with Section 5, Installation of Lift and Escalators of Part 8, Building Services of National Building Code of India. Where applicable, fire lifts shall be provided with a minimum capacity for 8 passengers and fully automated with emergency switch on ground level. In general, buildings 15 meter in height or above shall be provided with fire lifts. In case of fire, only firemen shall operate the fire lift. In normal course, it may be used by other persons. Each fire lift shall be equipped with suitable intercommunication equipment for communicating with the control room on the ground floor of the building. The number and location of fire lifts in a building shall be decided after taking into consideration various factors like building population, floor area, compartmentation, etc. Type of exits An exit may be a doorway, a corridor, a passage or a way to an internal staircase or external staircase, ramp or to a veranda and terraces, which have eaves to the street or to the roof of a building. An exit may also include a horizontal exit leading to an adjoining building at the same level. Lifts and escalators shall not be considered as exits. The requisite number and size of various exits shall be provided based on number of occupants in each room and floor based on the occupant load, capacity of exits, travel distance and height of building.
Exits shall be so located that the travel distance on the floor shall not exceed 22.5 meter. Whenever more than one exit is required for a floor of a building, exits shall be placed at remote from each other as possible. All the exits shall be accessible from the entire floor area at all floor levels. Width of staircase. The minimum width of staircase or corridors for multi-storied residential building up to 15 meter height should be 1 meter and for residential building above 15 meter or up to 24 meter in height shall be 1.2 meter and for building above 24 meter in height the minimum width shall be 1.5 meter. The values mentioned in the video were taken from UDCPR 2020 for Maharashtra state. I hope you understood the points explained in the video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will be learning about requirements of part of building. The first one is plinth. The plinth of building shall be so located with respect to the surrounding ground level that adequate drainage of the site is assured. The height of plinth shall not be less than 30 cm above the surrounding ground level. In areas subjected to flooding, the height of plinth shall be at least 45 cm above the high flood level. Covered parking spaces and garages shall be raised at least 15 centimeters above the surrounding ground level and shall be satisfactorily drained. Size and dimension of habitable rooms shall be as per requirement and convenience of the owner. Any habitable room should have minimum height of 2.75 meter and maximum 4.5 meter. Habitable room in economic weaker section or low income group housing should have minimum height of 2.75 meter and maximum 4.2 meter. Air conditioned habitable room can have minimum height of 2.4 meter and maximum 4.5 meter. The size of kitchen or cooking space shall be as per requirement and convenience of the owner. The height of a kitchen measured from the surface of the floor to the lowest point in the ceiling shall not be less than 2.75 meter. The size of bathroom and water closet. For independent bathroom, the minimum size should be 1 by 1.2 meter. For independent water closet, the minimum size should be 0.9 by 0.9 meter. For combined bathroom and water closet, 1.5 meter square with minimum width or width as 1 meter. The height of a bathroom or water closet measured from the surface of the floor to the lowest point in the ceiling shall not be less than 2.1 meter. Other requirements of bathroom and water closet. Every bathroom or water closet shall be so situated that it derives ventilation from ventilation shaft or external air. It shall have a window or ventilator opening to a shaft or open space of area not less than 0.3 square meter with side not less than 0.3 meter. All the sewerage outlets shall be connected to the sewerage system. Loft may be provided at suitable places as per requirement. It may be provided over kitchen, habitable rooms, bathrooms, water closets and corridors. The clear headroom under the loft shall not be less than 2.1 meter. 
It shall not interfere with the ventilation of the room under any circumstances. The maximum height of loft shall be 1.5 meter. The minimum size of mezzanine floor shall be as per requirement and convenience of owner. The aggregate area of such mezzanine floor shall in no case exceed 50% of built up area of that room. Where loft is provided in the room, the mezzanine floor shall not be allowed. The headroom under mezzanine floor shall not be less than 2.1 meter. A mezzanine floor may be permitted in a room or within a space provided. It conforms to the standards of living rooms as regards lighting and ventilation in case the mezzanine floor is used as habitable room. It is so constructed as not to interfere under any circumstances with the ventilation of the space over and under it. Such mezzanine floor or any part thereof will not be used as a kitchen. It is at least one meter away from the front wall of such room. Access to the mezzanine floor is from within the respective room only. The area of a storeroom, if provided in a residential building where light, ventilation, and height are provided at standards lower than as required for the living room shall be as per requirements and convenience of the owner. The roof of a building shall be so constructed or framed as to permit the drainage of rainwater there from rainwater pipes of adequate size wherever required as to ensure that the rainwater is carried away from the building without causing dampness in any part of the walls or foundation of the building or those of an adjacent buildings. Top terrace of a building shall not be subdivided and it shall have only common access. Balcony or balconies of a minimum width of 1 meter and maximum of 2 meter may be permitted in a residential buildings at any floor except ground floor and such balcony projection shall be subjected to the following conditions. In non-congested area, no balcony shall reduce the marginal open space to less than 2 meter up to 24 meter building height. For height 24 meter and more, no balcony shall reduce the marginal open space to less than 6 meter. Balcony, though not cantilever, shall be allowed on ground floor after leaving required setback or marginal distances. The width of the balcony shall be measured perpendicular to the building up to the outermost edge of balcony. Nothing shall be allowed beyond the outer edge of balcony. Every overhead water storage tank shall be maintained in a perfectly mosquito proof condition by providing a properly fitted hinged cover and every tank more than 1.5 meter in height shall be provided with a permanently fixed iron ladder. Parapet walls and handrails provided on the edges of roof terraces, balcony and veranda shall not be less than 1 meter and not more than 1.2 meter in height from the finished floor level. The maximum height of the front compound wall shall be 1.5 meter above the central line of the front street. The maximum height of side and rear compound wall shall be 1.5 meter above the average ground level of the particular plot. In case of a corner plot, the height of the boundary wall shall be restricted to 0.75 meter. All the values mentioned in the video were taken from UDCPR for Maharashtra State. I hope you understood the points explained in the video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about circulation.
The first part is doors. Doors in a building provide access, privacy, and safety for different rooms. The different types of doors classified on the basis of types of shutters are ledged and braced, single or double shutters made from timber are suitable for economical construction. The second one is framed and paneled, single or double shutters made from timber are suitable for entrance doors. Fully and partially glazed, Single or double shutters made from timber and glass is suitable for where light is to be admitted inside the room and where the view of landscape is to be enjoyed. Flush doors, single or double shutters made from pressed wood can be used for interior doors. Collapsible doors made from iron are suitable for staircases entrance for ventilation. Steel shutters are suitable for staircase entrances and entrance gate. The normal size of a door is 0.9 meter by 2.1 meter including the frame for all rooms and 0.75 meter by 2.1 meter for WCs and bathrooms. Here are the photographs of some types of doors. The next part is windows. Windows are classified on the basis of material and type of shutters that are provided, which is similar to that of doors. The window sill is kept at a height of 750 mm above floor level. Door and window tops are kept at the same level that is 2.1 meter above the floor level. Various fixtures and fastenings include hinges, tower bolts, handles, hooks, and knives. Interior staircase shall be constructed of non-combustible materials throughout. Hollow combustible construction shall not be permitted. The minimum width of tread without nosing shall be 25 cm for an internal staircase for residential building. The maximum height of riser shall be 19 cm in case of residential building and 15 cm in case of other buildings. The treads shall be constructed and maintained in a manner to prevent slipping. Handrails shall be provided with a minimum height of 100 cm from the center of the tread to the top of the handrails. The minimum headroom in a passage under the landing of a staircase shall be 2.2 m. I hope you understood the points explained in the video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to create floor plans in AutoCAD. These are the steps we will follow while creating the floor plans. First, we will check that we have selected the correct units. We will draw a basic line plan, then add wall thickness to it, add doors and windows, and lastly, add text and dimensions for each of the rooms. This is an image of the floor plan that we are going to create in AutoCAD. So let's start. First, we need to check whether we have selected the correct units for our drawing. To do this, type in units in the command line. I want to create this drawing in the metric units. So for this, I will choose decimal and keep the precision as 0.00 and over here I will choose meters and then click OK. So first we will draw the outline of the building. The shape of our building is symmetric so first we will draw half of our floor plan and then 
by using the mirror command we will draw the other half so let's create the shape of the building first for this we will use the line command if the ortho mode is not on you can turn it on by using the f8 function key on your keyboard So now that we have created our basic outline of the building, let us draw individual rooms. For this apartment, this area will be one unit and this will be the second. So let us draw rooms for each unit now. As this is the plan of ground floor, we have to provide lifts and staircase. First over here we will draw a lift and for drawing all the units I will use the rectangle command. This will be our kitchen. This will be our bedroom. This will be our WC. This will be our bathroom. And this will be our living room. Oh, now that we have drawn the outline of our rooms, let us add wall thicknesses to it. Using the offset command, I will add wall thickness to each of the rooms. I will take the wall thickness as 0 0.15 meter. Now that we have created the wall thicknesses, let us trim the unnecessary lines. For this, I will use the trim command.
So now that we have created our first unit, let us use the mirror command and create the same rooms over here. So I will select all these units. Type in MI for mirror. And I'll specify the first point of the mirror line over here. You do not want to erase the source object, so click no. We might have to do some modifying to fit this units into this area. So first we will select all these units and using the move command So this is our kitchen. I will select and by using the grips, I will edit this. And then we will delete this rectangle, this extra lines. And then draw the wall thickness for the kitchen over here by using the offset command. Trim and extend the necessary lines. Here we have already provided a lift, so on this side we will provide a staircase. Delete this. And for drawing the staircase use the rectangle command. By using the offset command again, draw the wall thickness. And trim this line. Now we will draw the staircase. By using the offset command, we will draw the steps. Type M for multiple. Draw a line at the center and now our staircase is complete. Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to create floor plans in AutoCAD. Now let us draw doors in our plan. So first we will draw the door for the lift. I will keep the width of the door as 1.22 meter. So therefore I will create a line at the center. And then by using the offset command 
and entering the distance as 0 0.61 which is half of 1.22 I will create offset on either sides. And then trim these lines. So now let us create the door for the living room. Similarly, I will draw a line. And then again by using the offset command and entering the width of the door, I will take it as 1.22 meter again. And then create the offset. And then trim this line. Similarly, I will create doors for the whole unit. And now let us create doors for the WC and bath. The width of the doors of WC and bath are comparatively less as the width of other doors. For this, I will take the width as 0 0.75 meter. And now the doors for this unit are complete. Let us create windows now. So, there will be one window for the living room, one for the kitchen and one for the bedroom. And WC and bath will have ventilators. So first, let us create windows for living room, kitchen and bedroom. Start by drawing a rectangle. And then by entering D for dimension, specify the length of rectangle. This will be the length of your window. I will take it as 1.8 meter and width will be equal to your thickness of the wall, which is 0 0.15 meter. And then draw a line in the middle. And then by using the offset command, offset this line at the distance of 0 0.2 meter. And then delete the line in the middle. These two lines will represent your window panels. Similarly, I will draw the ventilator. The width of the ventilator I will keep it as 0 0.6 meter and the thickness of the ventilator will be equal to the thickness of the wall. Now our window and ventilator is complete. Let us turn these into blocks. Use the block command for this. Specify the name as window. 
and then select the object and then press enter specify the base point and then click ok now this window is converted into a block similarly we will do this for the ventilator Even if you delete these blocks, by clicking on the drop down, here you can see the blocks which you have created. So, first we will use the window block and then place it over here. Here in the bedroom, I want to locate this window on this wall, so I will have to rotate it. For this, place the window block anywhere and then select it and use the rotate command. And then by using the move command, move the window to the desired location. Now let us place the ventilators. Now we have created both doors and windows for this unit. We will do the similar thing with this other unit. Now that we have added doors and windows to both our units, let us add text and dimensions for each room now. Type T for activating the text command. I will change the height of the text this is the living room before adding the dimension you want to measure the length and width of the room make sure while writing the dimension you always write the horizontal dimension first and then the vertical dimension. Now you can delete this. Similarly, I will add dimensions and text for all the rooms. As you can see, we have added text and dimension for both of these units. So the half part of our ground floor is now complete. Let us create the other half by using the mirror command. Type MI for mirror. Select the whole plan, then press enter. Specify this as the baseline.
now you can see the other part of our ground floor is also complete. This is our third unit. And this is a fourth unit. Now the drawing of our ground floor is complete. Let us name this drawing. In a similar manner, I have drawn the typical floor plan for first to seven floors. Instead of the parking, I have added four more units here, this being the first unit, second, third and fourth. I have added a passage of 1.22 meter width over here and two passages over here and here. I hope you understood the points explained in this video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to create front elevation in AutoCAD. Let us start drawing the front elevation now. For this, the first thing you need to do is measure out the whole length of the building. So here, the length comes out to be 38.62 meter. While drawing the front elevation, remember that we will be looking at the building from this direction. So, you will be able to see the details of this side only. So first let us draw a line of 38.62 meter. As it is G plus 7 building, the total height of the building including the ground floor will be 24 meter if the floor to floor height of one floor is 3 meter. So, draw a line of 24 meter. This will represent the height of the building. But keep in mind that the lift machine room is excluded from this height. So, let us start drawing the details now. First, you will see this edge, which we have already drawn now. Then we'll see the edges of this kitchen and then this terrace and then finally this edge. Measure out the distance and then we can create it in the front elevation by using the offset command. So the first line is at 3.2 meter. Press enter or space bar to select the offset command again. And the next distance was 2.73 meter. And the next distance is 3.35 meter. And the last distance is 5.63 meter.
on this side also you will see the similar details so we will use the mirror command and create the same lines over here specify the first point from the midpoint of this line and do not erase the source object we have created a basic line plan of our elevation now when you look at the first floor we have drawn one two three four and the sixth line in the front elevation but we haven't drawn the edge line of this terrace in the ground floor it wasn't present but while drawing the elevation of floor first to seventh this terrace will also be visible so this distance is 3.2 meter so we will take an offset of 3.2 meter first let us draw the terraces of the first floor the terrace of first floor is at an height of 3.34 meter and the width of the terrace is 3.35 meter and height of parapet wall in front of the terrace is 1.5 meter we will select these two lines and copy them over here and then trim these lines The next terrace is at a height of 4.5 meter so we will use the offset command for the distance type in 4.5 meter and then by using the offset command you can draw the height of the parapet wall similarly i will create two more terraces above this now that we have created our terraces let us trim the unnecessary lines such as these Now let us draw these windows on the ground floor and first floor. First we will draw the window of this living room on the ground floor. For that I will first draw the window and then convert it into a block. Start by drawing a rectangle of the length 1.8 meter and height 1.2 meter and then specify the offset distance as 0 0.06 meter for the window frame and then draw a line in the center for showing two of the window panels our next window will be this i will use the rectangular command again and for this i will give both the length and width as 1.8 meter as this is the window for the staircase then again i will specify the offset distance as 0.06 for the frame of the window and then draw a line in the center.
this door frame in the first floor will also be visible behind the terrace so we also want to draw that as well so for drawing that start by drawing a rectangle of the length 1.8 meter and height 1.08 meter and then draw its frame and then trim these lines so all the type of windows are now complete let us place them into our front elevation let us use the ground floor plan as a reference to place the windows in our front elevation And the height at which the window will be placed is 1.66 meter. So let us copy this window and specify this as the base point and place it over here. And then by simply extending these lines, you can place the door frame also. Let us place the door frame for each of the terrace now. Select the store frame and then use the copy command. Now you can delete these lines. Let us also draw a door frame for this terrace now. Select the door frame and then by using the copy command, copy the door frame at the center of the line. In this way, we have created door frames for all the terraces now. Now we will also copy this window for all the floors. And as you can see, for the first floor, you also have windows over here. Now let us place this window for all the floors. Select the window and use the copy command. Specify the base point and enter the second point at a distance of 6 meter. And then for adding a window here, add the distance as 12 meter. And then for adding the window here, add the distance as 18 meter. Now similarly, let us create this window for the staircase. Draw a line at the edge of the window. And 
draw an offset at a distance of 1.8 meter and then the window is at a height of 2.76 meter. Select this and by using the move command, place the window over here and then delete these lines. Now let us create the staircase window for all the floors now. First select the window and use the copy command. Specify the base point. The distance of the base point from one window to another is 3.08. So type that as the distance. And then the next distance will be 6.16. And the next distance will be 9.24. Now we have created the staircase window for all the floors. So similarly, I have added windows for this kitchen and this bedroom. Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to create front elevation in AutoCAD. Now we can take advantage of the symmetry and delete all of these lines and then select all this and then use the mirror command. So our front elevation is almost complete. We just have to draw the headroom for lift. So the front elevation of our plan is now complete. 